Alright, welcome back guys. In this video we're going to be having a look at War Thunder and being patient and ambushing. So I'm playing a, a low tier British tank here, the, the Stuart. This is a 2.0 battle rating vehicle. And all I'm doing at the start of the game here is I'm looking for a position on the hill in front of me for which I can support my team either in taking objective B or C depending on where I end up and I I run into a a rock here and damage my my right track which is a little bit embarrassing couldn't quite see it because of the beautiful pink flowers that I was getting distracted by I'm trying to get up onto the <laughs> up onto the hill here and see if I can find a nice position overlooking one of the objectives either to provide fire support or even just some recon or just allow me to assess the the situation and respond accordingly I uh, lose a bit of traction there trying to go over the hill so reverse a bit and uh, second times the charm get a little bit of a a run up here and try again and there we go get around that very nicely so I get a, a nice little position here actually where I can look at objective C, let's switch to my view, with my binoculars and my gun looking down the road here. And when I look at the minimap in the bottom right corner, I can see that actually none of my teammates are going to the to the C objective. So there's not much point in me trying to be a solo Rambo hero here. So what I do is I'm just patient. And I see one tank on the objective over there. I check my gun sight. I see another tank behind him. So I already know there that I'm outnumbered in this situation. If I try to, to go and take this objective here, it's probably, you know, the odds are against me at the end of the day. And I see a third tank. So now I know the odds are really against me. But that's okay. We... We don't have to, you know, immediately start fighting, immediately start shooting. We can play a more kind of intelligent game here. So I see if I can take a, a little sniper shot here, and I think it just catches onto the, the top of the roof. Now that's okay. If we take a look at this at this position from a, a different kind of perspective, if we try and use the, the free camera here, and let's go a little bit towards the road here, and let's try and turn the camera a little bit and let's see what this position looks like from from outside looking in so there's my tank there's my tank and we see that actually just the the very top of the turret is is kind of visible from this position that's uh, zooming a little bit into the air too much let's go down a bit and so this position here is very well hidden we see here and really only the very top of the tank is visible we can see there and it's even in the shade a little bit so it's kind of darkening the top of the the turret as well and this blends in very well and you know even from a a short distance it's difficult to see but from a much further away distance it's very difficult to see i think this is the the player that i try to to take a shot at let's just keep uh, going forwards from his perspective and so from here this is this was the line of sight that was a shot I took and I couldn't quite get him switch back to to my position here and I'm still observing here and there was a little bit of a uh, machine gun fire there that just missed me I think or maybe just caught the very top of my turret so there's an M8 I see that the other two tanks are still in the background somewhere. Here they come into view. So if I try to take a shot onto the M8 here, these other two M2 A4s would see where I was firing from. It would reveal my position. In which case then I would have to begin a kind of 2 or 3v1 fight. So I see that they've taken the, they've taken the C objective over here and the M8 starts to go up the road here. And so I assume that probably these two tanks are going to do the same thing. If we look at the way the, the objectives are separated, once you have C, 
going down this road here is not so useful for much unless you want to try and do a kind of spawn camping thing which can be difficult depending on how experienced you are but at the end of the day most of the tanks are going to be on the objectives and we see that's true here and so once you've taken one objective trying to move to another objective is generally a, a sensible thing to do and that's what that's what the players are trying to do here so let's let's see what happens here I know they're going to move up the road I know the M8 is ahead of them and I see here now that if they go up this road they're actually exposing their side armor to me if we pause it here this is the perfect kind of ambushing position here but we have a choice we have three targets available to shoot and which ones are the best ones to shoot first is really the the question we need to ask ourselves now if we if we try to shoot the m8 first the problem with that is that both of these m2 a4s will see the shell that i fire you know the, the shells in war thunder they leave a kind of trail behind them and this this allows you to see a lot of the time where players are shooting from so if i shoot at this m8 on the left here then both of these tanks are going to see that shell unless they're completely blind but probably they would see it and once they see it then they will turn and they will start trying to shoot me now the angle i had facing the c objective was really really good because it only revealed my turret this one at this angle is less good because it actually does reveal some of the the chassis of my tank if i quickly try to to turn around here and we get a a, a look at this angle where my tank is my tank has disappeared <laughs> there it is okay so at this angle here, if we have a look from, say, um, Labio's perspective, and we try to turn the camera here, and there's my tank in the distance, we change to the, the free camera, we can see that my tank is definitely much more visible from this angle. Now, my tank is, is, is diamond angled, as we might call it. So I do have some, some reasonable angles on my armor here for hopefully bouncing some shots but it's never kind of guaranteed especially with these these light tanks but I'm, I'm doing the best i can with what i have and it is still the hills are still protecting some of my tank from being uh shot fortunately so let's jump back jump back to me but i have a choice here and so in these situations then the the kind of best course of action is that we're going to shoot the tank that is at the back of the pack first and in this way then the tanks at the front hopefully will not see that their friends are being shot at because these tanks are facing to the left they're facing a direction which i am not in and so this is this is an, an advantage that we can utilize here we have we have kind of two advantages here the first advantage is that our opponents are exposing their side armor and side armor is, in most cases, easier to penetrate and therefore easier to damage your opponent's tanks with. And the other advantage is that as your opponents are facing a different direction than the direction you are in, before they can fire at you, they have to spend time rotating their turret or rotating their tank before they can do that. And that can give you some precious seconds to work with in which you can get shots off on those tanks before they can shoot you. So this is what I do. I'm looking for the tank at the back to shoot, but Radek moves ahead. And so as he does that, then I fire at Flabio. I get this nice penetrating hit and he realizes he is being shot but this this radek is very quick off the draw he immediately breaks and he knows something's up either he saw the shell he was zoomed out or even he was just looking my way while still facing his tank that way but he he knows what's up and he's he's now turning to engage me now i already took one shot at this tank and i got the penetrating hit so it's likely that just one or two more shots will probably take this tank out and reducing the fight from two versus one to one versus one. You know, it's always going to work out better. So I see him turning here and I don't shoot yet. I want to wait so that I can get a nice clean shot. 
right at the center mass. There we go. And now the crew is knocked out. It's 1v1. Radek does see where I am. He fires, but he his shell gets bounced thanks to this this nice position, this nice angling. I get a shot at him. My second shot doesn't penetrate. It's a, a weird position between his turret and his tank. So I go for a lower body shot. This one penetrates. And now having gotten two penetrating shots on the body, it's generally a better idea to start shooting at different places. Because to destroy the tank, we have to just knock out the crew. So having got some penetrating shots onto the body, I now start trying to aim for the turret instead to see if I can get that last remaining crew member. And there we go. I get it in that last shot. And there's two, there's two opponents taken out in in one ambush and it, this was just by being patient you, you know we we saw the original situation was four tanks v1 i had no support i had no allies here it was just me on top of the hill and so the the option of how to engage is entirely up to me and I, if i just rush down and throw my tank away trying to fight 4v1 well probably i'm not going to get any kills I'm not going to get any any research points, I'm not going to get any silver lions, I'm just going to be footing the the repair cost myself. Although the repair costs of these these lower tier tanks is not exactly high, it is it is still a repair cost at the end of the day and I'm not succeeding. So instead just by being patient, just by waiting, by by looking at the situation and the terrain and just letting our opponents put themselves in a situation that is, you know, to our advantage rather than to our detriment, then we see that we can even win these situations where we are outnumbered. And the other tanks I, I wasn't able to get, they got away, but otherwise the the situation resolved itself fairly well in my favor, I would say. So I'm just going to fast forward the game here a little bit. I do spend some time in these hills looking around for any other kind of um, sneaky ambushes I can get on any tanks that are coming through here but actually my team is doing very well so what I do is now I move to the C objective I see that my ally here on the minimap is already capturing C and so in this case I'm, I can feel fairly confident that it's safe to advance and you know there won't really be anything waiting to ambush me because if there were they would choose my my ally who is on the objective to ambush before they would choose me certainly if they looked at the mini map they would be able to see it being captured and so it tends to be that that's the way it goes so i allow my my ally to capture that i i knew that if i tried to get there i probably wouldn't arrive in time to get any capture points so instead i try to to go ahead I thought the umbrella there was some strange umbrella tank for a second. <laughs> so I go ahead here and I use this hill to see if I can get a nice overlooking position on the the road leading to the to the sea objective. So once I get here, I don't put my tank on the crest of the hill, but I do see an enemy tank in the distance. So there he is. And he's coming down the road. And what I need to evaluate here as well is, does he have any allies coming with him, coming behind him? Or is he alone for me to ambush by myself? And again here, I'm not just rushing up on top of the hill for the, for the ambush. We see actually in this case that this tank is aiming at where I am. He is looking in at least in this general direction. And so in the time it takes me for me to, to put my tank on top of this, this ridge that's in front of me, if this player is paying attention, he would actually be able to shoot me before I could shoot him. So again here, this is, this is not rushing ahead. This is using the terrain, so my tank is hidden. He can't see my tank. Using the binoculars to look over this ridge, see what the situation is and assess it. And I realize here that this tank is actually coming down this road to the sea objective. And so I pre-aim at the road. I use my binoculars to look to see if he's coming yet. I realize he is. And now I just wait. And I let my opponent bring himself to me. Essentially 
put himself into into my crosshairs for me. And here is another nice side shot, one into the body, one into the turret. Both all the not both all of the crew members are dead, and that is a beautiful two shot ambush kill again, just by using the terrain, staying hidden, using the binoculars to assess the situation, and then just being patient and you know taking the fight where we have the most advantage and the least disadvantage. And this that's it, you know, we have a nice a nice little ten minute or eleven minute game here with three kills. No tank loss whatsoever, and and that's us. So that's the that's the lesson here: looking at at what's going on, assessing the situation, and not being or well, not trying to be Rambo. We look at how it's going, and we think about how we can engage our opponents in a smart way. And so that's that's it for this video, guys. I hope that was uh, interesting and and useful for you. This is how to be patient and how to ambush. So thanks for coming, and I hope you come back next time.